winter. So it's lost its red color. It actually turns red in the fall as it gets colder. And it's quite beautiful mass planted with all that red foliage throughout the winter. In a few weeks, it'll get some off-white flowers and then develop a red berry. And those red berries will typically hold on through most of the winter. I've included videos in the description of this video for planting shrubs. Uh, really, there's nothing special for planting nandinos. They go in the clay or the sand or wherever you want to put them. Just don't put them in too deep and don't over mulch them. But I've told people before, if you start killing nandina domesticas, you probably need to change hobbies. Nandinas are extremely drought tolerant. The first year it's in the ground, you're definitely going to want to keep a close eye on it. Uh, dig down a little bit near it. If it's dry, drown the space around it and then let it dry out. They will get yellow leaves, and this one actually has a few now because it's, I've let this container get a little too dry. They'll get some yellow leaves in the center. When you see that, that's the time to drag a water hose to it. Other than that, if you live in an area with normal rainfall, you're just not going to have to do any ongoing watering on these typically. I would fertilize Nandinas in late winter or early spring, any kind of slow-release fertilizer. The new growth on them is fantastic. Don't do any fertilizing on these after midsummer because if you put any new growth on them late, it will get burned badly. You can prune heavenly bamboo anytime you want to prune it. We are growing Nandina domestica, the regular one, for also having the flowers and the berries. So if it were me and I was pruning it, 